April 2015, a joint World Heritage Center and IUCN reactive monitoring mission visited Jibe 3 Dam and Kuraz Sugar Scheme in Ethiopia. One of the major findings was the likelihood of a two-meter drop in water in Lake Trukana arising from the three-year filling period for Jibe 3 Dam. This, according to Professor Daniel Olago, an expert in environmental geology at the University of Nairobi, Department of Geology, is detrimental to aquatic life. A vertical decline in water levels of two meters may translate into a huge extent of aerial, sub-aerial land exposed, sub-aqueous land exposed. Salinity refers to the total amount of salt found in water. It is measured in parts per milliliters. Lake Trukana has a salinity of 2.5, meaning for every 1,000 grams of water, there is 2.5 grams of salt. This water is not portable. Professor Olago, who has conducted extensive research in Lake Trukana, also says the quality and volume of the water will also be affected as exposure of the lake will further increase salinity. When you change the salinity, you change the environment in which particular kinds of organisms are able to thrive. So if we consider that the current state is the optimal state for the different types of species of fish, of macrophytes, of plankton, of zooplankton, then if we have any change, we're going to get a change in the species composition of the ecosystem to those that are more tolerant to higher salinities. The report also found there was no evidence of a strategic environmental assessment having been undertaken prior to construction. According to the Trukana County government, the county government was never involved in talks on construction of the dam. They did an agreement, but it's not casted on a stone. Let them revisit it. If it was just the aspect of energy, I am sure all of us know Kenya has enough energy. If God knew that Turkana are living along the shores of Lake Turkana, I don't know why God is giving a chance to whoever who wants to block the, lake to, the water to Lake Turkana to let him live a life. And if that Almighty God is there, <coughs> yeah. please God, take him away or take us away and you remain alone, God. The Kenya Electricity and Transmission Company, Ketrako, is constructing a transmission line from Sodo in Ethiopia to Suswa in Kenya. Kenya purchases power from the Ethiopian national grid and not from the dam. The primary purpose of the Jibe 3 dam is hydropower production. Ketrako says this will not have any effect on the lake as the dam does not take water. But a 96-page report by Human Rights Watch documents the serious threats posed by the dam construction. The report titled There Is No Time was produced after interviews with 40 people between April 2014 and February 2015. According to the report, construction of the dam will reduce the water supply to Lake Trukana by 50%. In the Yomo River Basin, the sugar plantations use up to 3 billion cubic meters per year. On the Ethiopian side, entrance to the main Kuraz came in body area is forbidden. The premises is guarded by the Ethiopian military, begging the question, why would an agricultural scheme be guarded in such secrecy? Why would the local population live in fear of being arrested? According to experts, Kenya stands to lose a vast and incredibly valuable natural heritage in Lake Trukana. There has not been any publicly released environmental impact assessment for the Kuraz scheme. It is therefore not clear what the findings were, if indeed one was ever done. According to hydrologist Dr. Sean Avery, who has carried out research at the shores of Lake Trukana, the water body remains at great risk. Uh, I had an inkling that uh, there was potential for large-scale commercial agricultural development in Lower Omo, but based on the master plan at that time, it was only about 70,000 hectares. We now know from various reports that have been produced that the government is looking at for over, over 400,000 hectares. In this diagram, hydrologist Shun Avery demonstrates the projected water levels in Lake Trukana, but his findings have been questioned. Uh, well, there's one key research that has been done but we cannot clearly verify the facts and until we do our own research on strategic environmental impact assessment, all the ecology and hydrology of the lake and the, the river. The lake is surrounded by Marsa Bay to the south, Tudunyang in the far north, 
came to the limelight in 2011 when close to 50 people were killed in a dawn massacre orchestrated by raiders from neighboring Ethiopia. It has been billed as one of the worst attacks in recent times which necessitated reinforcement from the national government. I believe, uh, as do many other scientists, that when the Ethiopians have completed their agricultural schemes, Lake Takana will virtually disappear and instead of a lake, it will be an old lake with nothing to show. I think Lake Takana is likely to be the second Aral Sea. It is ultimately one of the worst environmental disasters you can imagine. Besides Kuraz scheme, the Omo Valley has attracted several private irrigation schemes, among them a Turkish scheme. The government of Ethiopia gave 10,000 hectares of land at Korcho in the lower Omo to the Turkish investor. The lease on the land at Korcho was granted on the 25th of June 2012. There was, however, an EAI on the Turkish scheme, but work was already underway at the time the assessment was carried out. Environmental impact assessment is meant to be done as part of the planning procedure before any clearing is done. Pictures of the countryside and woodland cover prior to the clearance of the land and after clearance demonstrate lots of wood have been felled. There is not a single tree left in the main irrigation area. This demonstrates that they are not observing the mitigation measures mentioned and that the EAI was an afterthought once the project had already started. The farm is called Omo Valley Corporation PLC. Omo Valley Farm Corporation are in turn leasing 4,600 hectares of this land to another Turkish textiles company called ELS, Addis Industrial Development PLC. This arrangement was made without consultation with the local people to whom this land rightfully belongs. Documents seen by Channel 1 indicate the lease that the Turkish investor is paying amounts to 1,580,000 bear per year for the 10,000 hectares. That is US dollars per year at the current exchange rates. This translates to less for renting a one-acre property in Nairobi for a year. Thus begging the question, how are the locals compensated for the permanent loss of access to 10,000 hectares? When complete, Kuraz will be at least 150,000 hectares and is expected to consume a vast amount of water that would normally flow into Lake Trukana. Back in Trukana, residents believe Lake Trukana is their shield and defense. They feel the conflicts will increase if the lake diminishes. We have the Trukana, the Rendile, the Gabra on the other region. We have the Trukana only on this side. So what will happen is that it will increase a lot of conflicts, yeah, because they have not yet intermingled with the other ones. Gideon Lepalo is an environmental activist based in Masabit County, neighboring Trukana County. He initiated an online campaign to collect signatures to stop the construction of the dam. Well, UNEP was just, in my opinion, was just trying to be diplomatic and telling, and telling me to my face that, you know, this is a Kenyan affair. Uh, talk to the Kenyan um, uh, uh, government officials and try and resolve it in-house. But I'll, I would have expected UNEP by virtue of being a UN-mandated environmental body to just stamp its authority. The danger posed to Lake Trukana is further corroborated by a site developed by the World Resources Institute which maps water risks globally. A tool known as Aqueduct analyzes current and future strain on global resources. The results presented around Lake Trukana indicate a crisis underway. This, compared with the map of water risks globally, puts Trukana in a precarious situation. In 2012, an independent review of potential impacts of the Lake Trukana, commissioned by IUCN, found that the dam will permanently dampen the magnitude of flood variations. These flood pulses are important because, number one, they bring a lot of sediments into the lake. These sediments carry nutrients with them, so they replenish the nutrients. The loss of water over the years is affecting livelihoods. Uh, low makers, mm. yeah, for rivers, for lakes. Yeah, they're supposed to act once and for all, and to stop it. What are they doing? Uh, should they learn after we have died that uh, there was a, a clan or a tribe which lived along this lake. This is a matter that the county government of Trukana is worried about. 
The county government says it's in the process of conducting its own research because they are not sure the available studies were done independently. What is being done now is basically like trying to close the stable when the horses are bolted. It can be very complicated in that respect because commitments have been made to contractors, uh, certain projections have been made in terms of economic benefits, and at that point it becomes very difficult to ensure that these issues are in. Across the globe, lakes such as Chad and the Aral Sea faced a similar predicament. In the next edition, a group of traders migrated all the way from Congo and settled in Trukana to cash in on the thriving fish business. But all is not well anymore. Rosalia Pondo, Channel 1 News.